Have you ever looked at your website and thought something's not quite right, but the idea of a complete redesign feels like overkill? Well, what if I told you that in the next 15 minutes, you could make changes that would transform how people interact with your site? And I'm not talking about massive overhauls or complicated redesigns. I'm talking about small strategic improvements that pack a serious punch. Welcome to Think Inside the Square, a podcast full of tips and tricks to help you create a website that you're proud of. I'm your host, Becca Harpain, creator of InsideTheSquare.co, and in this episode, I'm sharing some of my favorite quick wins for improving your website design in less than 15 minutes. For a transcript of this episode, along with the links to any resources mentioned, visit InsideTheSquare.co forward slash podcast. This episode is powered by Joey, a coffee alternative that I have been loving lately. My caffeine consumption was getting a little out of control, so I've been trying different coffee alternatives lately, and Joey is my favorite by far. One cup in the morning, and I've got steady energy all day and zero jitters. If you want to mix up your morning routine with something a little less caffeinated but still energizing, visit my affiliate link insidethesquare.co forward slash Joey for a discount on your first order. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash J-O-E-Y. Now, on to the episode. Let's face it, our websites don't always get the attention they deserve, especially in the time between big launches. But you don't need a complete overhaul to make some meaningful improvements. Sometimes the smallest tweaks can have the biggest impact on how your website performs and how your visitors interact with it. So in this episode, I want to cover four powerful 15-minute improvements that can transform your website. We're going to talk about making your footer work harder for your business, We're going to talk about my favorite black and white tests that you can use to perfect your call to actions. We'll discuss leveraging AI to check your content clarity and how to optimize your navigation for a better user flow. Now, the best part, you can implement each one of these improvements in just 15 minutes or less. Now, let's start with one of the most overlooked areas of a website, the footer. You might think that your website footer is just this thing at the bottom of your site where you stick your copyright notice and call it a day but it's actually some prime real estate that could be working so much harder for your website. Think about it. There are two main reasons that someone would scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. Option one, they devoured your content and they want to read more. Or option two, they didn't find what they were looking for. Something is missing from your main navigation or the call to action on the page blended so well that they skimmed right past it. So what exactly are these people looking for? They're usually hunting for specific information, whether that's your contact details, your social media links, or answers to common questions. What's fascinating is how predictable this behavior really is. I've reviewed analytics data for hundreds of websites throughout my career, and I keep seeing the same pattern. Footer links often have higher conversion rates than the same links placed elsewhere on the site, because when someone scrolls to your footer, they're usually on a mission. They are actively looking for something, which means they're more likely to take action when they find it. This is especially true for things like contact forms, subscription signups, and resource links. I see this play out in my own analytics all the time. The newsletter signup form in my footer consistently outperforms the same form when it's placed in the middle of the page. People who reach the footer are often my most engaged visitors. They've read through the content, they're interested in what I have to say, and they want to learn more. Now, the other interesting thing about footers is that they serve as a safety net for your website navigation. Think about it like this. Your main menu, it's like the table of contents in a book, but your footer is like the index. This is where people go when they know exactly what they're looking for, but they can't find it in the obvious places. That's why it's crucial to think strategically about what goes in your website footer. It's not just about cramming in every link that you couldn't fit in your main navigation. This is about understanding the mindset of someone who's scrolled all the way down your page and giving them exactly what they need at that moment. So now that you understand how important footers are, let's move on to the next 15-minute improvement. Now, this test might sound a little strange at first, but trust me, this can transform how effectively your website converts visitors into customers. I call it the black and white test, and it has become my secret weapon for instantly spotting conversion problems on a website. Here's what's so fascinating about how we process visual information. Our brains are drawn to contrast before anything else. When someone lands on a page on your website, their brain is automatically searching for what stands out, what's different, what demands attention. And this is exactly why the black and white test is so powerful. 
When you strip away all the colors from your website, you're left with pure contrast. Suddenly, you can see your page the way your visitor's brain sees it in those crucial first few milliseconds. But here's where it gets really interesting. Contrast isn't about making everything stand out. It's about creating a visual hierarchy that guides your visitor's attention. You want your most important elements to have the highest contrast and then create a deliberate scaling down to the least important elements. This is especially crucial for Squarespace sites because very often we rely on the platform's built-in color themes and button styles. And while these can look beautiful, they don't always create the contrast hierarchy that our websites need to convert effectively. A button might look perfect in your brand colors, but if it doesn't have the right contrast, your visitors might scroll right past it. So how the heck do you make your website black and white? There are plenty of different ways to do this, but I personally use a free Chrome extension. I'll link to it in the show notes. You turn on this Chrome extension and it turns the page into grayscale. It strips all the color out of there so you can easily see the visual hierarchy and contrast on that specific page. Definitely a fun test to do on your website. And again, I'll link to that Chrome extension in the show notes. Now let's talk about something that has completely transformed how I approach website content, a quick win that I think everyone should do, not just for websites, but for emails, honestly, any other content that you create. This 15-minute improvement is such a game changer. Use AI as a powerful tool to check if what you've written actually communicates what you think it does. Think about the last time you wrote content for your website. Maybe it was a new services page or your about page or even just a button or changing up your footer because you did the first 15-minute test in this episode. <laughs> now, you probably spent a little bit of time crafting the right message or choosing the exact right words. But here's the thing about writing your own content. You're too close to it. You know exactly what you mean. You know what you're going to say. And sometimes that can make it hard to spot when your message isn't as clear as it should be. This is where AI becomes incredibly powerful. Modern AI tools can analyze your content and tell you exactly how it comes across to a fresh reader. Does your about page actually sound confident and professional like you intend? Or is it coming across as apologetic? Is your service description clear and compelling, or is it getting lost in industry jargon? What's particularly fascinating about this approach is that it can help you spot tone mismatches that you might have missed. You might think you're being helpful and supportive in your writing, but your word choices might come across as condescending. Or maybe you're trying to sound authoritative, but your language patterns are undermining your expertise. And here's what's really powerful about using AI to analyze your copy like this. This is not about changing your voice or having AI write for you. It's about using AI as a mirror to reflect back how your authentic voice is actually landing with your audience. It's like having a focus group at your fingertips ready to give you that instant feedback on your messaging. When I have AI evaluate my content for overall tone and authenticity, one of the things that I like to mention is that I'm writing this piece of content for someone who is intelligent but has no knowledge of the subject. That helps me identify whether or not I'm using too much industry jargon, and I might need to change some words around to make it easy to understand. That's one of my favorite prompts, and I'll share it with you again. I'm writing this piece of content for someone who is intelligent but has no knowledge of the subject. Using AI to analyze your copy like this is especially important for Squarespace users because our platform puts so much emphasis on beautiful design. Sometimes we get so caught up in making our sites look amazing that we forget to check if our message is actually getting through. The most stunning website in the world will not convert if your content isn't connecting with your audience. Now let's move on to the last of our 15-minute improvements here, and it's a big one, your website's navigation. Now you might be thinking, Becca, my navigation's fine. I've got all my pages listed right there in the menu. It's what I want. But here's the thing. Good navigation is not about listing your pages. It's about guiding your visitor's journey. Think about the last time you walked into a well-designed store. You probably didn't consciously notice how the aisles were arranged or how the signs were positioned, but I bet you found what you were looking for pretty easily. That's because someone put serious thought into how you would move through that space. Your website navigation needs to work the same way. Here is what's so fascinating about this. Studies have shown that if someone can't find what they're looking for within three clicks, they're likely to leave your site. But, and this is the interesting part, it's not actually about the number of clicks. It's about whether each click feels like progress. If someone clicks through four pages but feels like they're getting closer to what they want with each click, they will stick around. 
But if they make two clicks and they feel even more lost than before, they're gone. This is why the standard home, about, services, contact, navigation menu might not be serving your website as well as you think. Sure, it covers all the basics, but does it reflect how your visitors actually think about your business? Does it match the questions they're trying to answer when they land on your site? The real power of navigation is not in organizing a list of your pages. It's in organizing your visitor's thought process. When someone lands on your site, they are not thinking in terms of pages. They're thinking in terms of questions. Can this person help me? How much will it cost? What's their experience? How do I get started? Your navigation should be a roadmap to those answers. So for this last 15-minute exercise, I want you to give your navigation a quick glance to see if it's actually answering the most important questions. All right, my friend, we covered four ideas in this episode. Optimizing your footer to work harder for your business. Using the black and white test to perfect your visual hierarchy. Leveraging AI to check your content clarity. And enhancing your navigation to guide your visitor's journey. Each one of these improvements is so powerful on its own, but here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to start with that black and white test. This is the quickest win with the biggest potential impact. Switch your screen to grayscale and really look at your homepage. What stands out? What disappears? Make a note of anything that surprises you. Those surprises are your opportunities for improvement. For detailed instructions on how to run this test, plus all the resources for the other improvements I covered today, check out the show notes for this episode at insidethesquare.co forward slash podcast. I've included some step-by-step guides and links to all the tools that I mentioned. Again, that's insidethesquare.co forward slash podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Think Inside the Square. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you happen to be listening to this episode and head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash email to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Thank you so much for tuning in. And most importantly, have fun with your website. Bye for now.